Okay, so imagine like sitting down with a humpback whale. Right. And just like chatting. What would you even, I mean, what would you talk about? Well, you know, it's uh, right. it's funny you should mention that because scientists are getting closer to actually doing that. Really? Yeah. So today's deep dive is all about exploring that possibility. Okay. It really is a fascinating field. And, what you know, that could have implications uh, yeah. far beyond just like understanding whales, these magnificent creatures. Right, right. We've got this article um from earth.com okay and it's about uh this interaction between scientists and a humpback whale uh -huh. named twain and you know this is not your typical whale encounter right. this is a, a real attempt at two-way communication yeah i mean what's really intriguing is the context right yeah. this wasn't just like some happy accident this was a deliberate effort by these researchers um from the Whale SETI project. Whale SETI. Whale SETI. And they're specifically interested in, um, you know, really understanding whale communication yeah. with the long-term goal of applying that knowledge to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. So they're looking to whales for clues about how we might, like, talk to aliens. Exactly. That's, I mean, that's a pretty wild concept. Can you break down the um, the thinking behind that a little bit? behind whale SETI. Absolutely. And yeah. So the core idea, right, is that by studying the communication of these, you know, highly intelligent beings right here on Earth, well, yeah. beings who evolve completely differently from us, right? Yeah. We might gain insights into how to recognize and then decode messages from extraterrestrial intelligence. Okay. Because we can't assume aliens will communicate in ways that we just readily understand. Of course not. I mean, you know. Okay. I'm I'm already hooked. So let's get back to Twain. What exactly happened during this conversation? So the whale study team uh, was led by Dr. Brenda McCowan. Uh, from UC Davis, okay. and they were off the coast of Alaska, Okay, and they used this uh, underwater speaker to play this recording of a humpback, what they call a contact call. What's a contact call? It's essentially a, a kind of greeting. Okay. Like, hey, what's up? Exactly. Okay. And uh, Twain responded. He did. He did. And not just like a quick, you know, chirp back. He actually approached the boat and engaged with the researchers for like about 20 minutes matching the intervals of the calls that they were playing. So he was mimicking them. Yeah, it was a back and forth exchange, yeah. unlike anything that had been observed before. Okay, so are they saying that this was actual dialogue? Like, we were speaking whale? Well, the article states that it was potentially the first time that humans and humpbacks communicated directly uh, using the whale's own signals. Okay. In their own language. Wow. Which is a pretty like, monumental step. It makes you wonder, like, what secrets are hidden in those whale songs? That's precisely what Whale SETI is trying to uh, to unravel. They're going beyond simple observation, right? They're employing some pretty uh, cutting-edge technology to analyze these whale sounds and to really look for deeper meaning. Okay, now you've got to tell me more about that. What kind of technology are we talking about here? Are they, like building a whale translator or something? Um, well, it's not quite a universal translator yet, okay. but it's surprisingly sophisticated. Okay. They're using AI. Oh, wow. Specifically machine learning algorithms. Okay. And uh, something called information theory. Oh, wow. To really analyze the complexity and structure of whale sounds. Okay. Information theory. Yeah. Uh, I have to admit that one's going over my head a little bit. Mm -hmm. Can you explain it like super simply? Sure. Um, think of it like this. Information theory helps us measure the amount of information that's contained in a message. Okay. It's all about patterns, you yeah. know, predictability. Yeah. And how much meaning can be sort of packed into a signal. Right. So by applying that to whale communication, researchers are trying to determine, you know, if there's a system, like a kind of grammar or syntax mm -hmm. embedded in those songs and calls. So they're looking for rules, like the rules of grammar that we use in language. Exactly. And and what's fascinating is that they're starting to find evidence that whale communication might be um, much more structured than we previously thought. Hold on. So we're talking like whale sentences here? Whale vocabulary? Well, it might be a little early for a whale dictionary, but uh, the findings are definitely exciting. Yeah. For instance, they're noticing these specific sequences of clicks and whistles that always seem to occur together. Okay. Almost like phrases in a sentence. Okay. This suggests a level of organization and complexity that we're, you know, really only beginning to grasp. So it makes you wonder, like, if someday we could actually decipher what they're saying? That's the dream, right. 
But even if we never fully understand their quote unquote language, just understanding that it exists, that there's a system there. I mean, that's a huge leap forward. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And this Twain interaction really highlights the potential for two way communication. What else makes this specific encounter so important? Well, Twain's response was significant. Uh, because it wasn't just some random reaction to a sound. Right. He actively engaged with the researchers, right, mm. mimicking their pattern and timing. This suggests a level of, like, intentionality. Oh. Right? Yeah. A willingness to communicate that's crucial for understanding the possibilities of, you know, in interspecies dialogue. Like he was saying, hey, I want to talk too. Exactly. Okay, so we've got these, like, incredibly intelligent creatures. Right. Potentially using complex language. Yeah. And like seemingly interested in interacting with us. I mean, it sounds like something out of science fiction. It really does. And it begs the question, if whales who evolved in a completely different environment right. with, you know, totally different biological constraints can develop these sophisticated communication systems. I mean, what other forms of intelligence and communication might be out there, both here on Earth? and beyond. That's a pretty mind-blowing thought. <laughs> and, you know, that takes us right to the heart of why this research is so important, right? Uh, absolutely. Understanding whale communication isn't just about, like, deciphering their songs. Right. It's about expanding our understanding of, like, intelligence itself. Okay. And challenging our assumptions about what communication can even look like. It's about, you know, opening our minds to the possibilities of life and intelligence in, like, all its forms. So how do whales go about you know, communicating? What makes their communication so so unique and complex? Well, you know, for starters, they're communicating in a, a completely different medium than we are. Right. They're using sound, but it's underwater, right. which travels differently. Right. Has its own set of, you know, challenges, I, possibilities. Yeah. I hadn't even considered that. So it's like trying to have a conversation, like shouting through a swimming pool. Kind of, yeah. Okay. So what are, like, some of the, the unique things that whales can do with sound that we can't? One of the most remarkable things is their ability to to use sound for echolocation. Echolocation. Yeah, so they, they send out these clicks and whistles, right, that yeah. bounce off objects. Right. Giving them a three-dimensional picture of their surroundings, it's essentially like they're seeing with sound. Oh, wow. So it's not just about communication. Right. It's about, like, navigating and finding food. Exactly. And this highlights another uh, key aspect of whale intelligence their ability to adapt to their environment. I mean, they've evolved these incredible sensory and communication abilities, right? Right. To thrive in a world that's just, you know, vastly different from our own. It, it makes you wonder, like, if their, their understanding of the world is totally different from ours. There's a good chance it is, yeah. For example, like, their perception of time might be completely different. Oh. Given that sound travels much faster in water. And then their their concept of distance, too, you know, could be shaped by the vastness of the ocean. So we're not just talking about a different language. Right. We're talking about a different way of, like, experiencing reality. It's precisely. Wow. And that's what makes uh, studying whales so fascinating mm -hmm. and, and potentially so challenging, too. Right. We're trying to understand a form of intelligence that's evolved in a completely different context than our own. It's like trying to translate poetry from a culture that we know nothing about. Yeah, that's a, that's a great analogy. Okay. And it underscores why researchers are so interested in finding like patterns and structures within whale songs. Okay. If we can identify those underlying rules, right, it could provide this this framework, you know, right. for understanding their communication, even if we don't have like a word for word dictionary. It's like finding the Rosetta Stone for whale language. Exactly. So like yeah. what are some of the specific challenges that that researchers face in deciphering these whale songs? I mean, one of the biggest challenges is just the sheer amount of data. OK. Whales can produce an incredible variety of sounds. And their songs can go on for hours. Wow. Even with AI and, you know, advanced computing power, mm. analyzing and making sense of all that data, it's it's a massive undertaking. It sounds like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Yeah. Only the haystack is made of whale songs. That's a good way to put it. Um, another challenge is that we're still not entirely sure what aspects of whale vocalizations actually carry meaning. Okay. You know? Is it the frequency of the sounds, the rhythm? the patterns of clicks and whistles. Right. It's likely a combination of all these factors, and figuring out how they all work together is a major puzzle. 
Okay, so even with all this like advanced technology, we're not just going to plug these whale songs into a computer and get a translation. No, no, it's a much more uh, nuanced process that involves, you know, identifying patterns, testing hypotheses, and just constantly refining our understanding of how whales communicate. Right. It sounds like a like a long and complex process, yeah. but it also feels incredibly important. It is, and it's not just about you know the potential for for communicating with whales themselves. Okay. It's about what this research could tell us about you know intelligence itself and yeah. how it manifests in these different forms. This brings us back to the the connection between whale communication and SETI. Mm. What are the biggest takeaways from from this research that, that could inform our search for extraterrestrial intelligence? Well, there are several key insights. First, you know, it highlights the, the diversity of intelligence. Okay. Whales have shown us that complex communication, problem solving abilities, social structures, all this stuff, it can evolve in creatures that are, I mean, vastly different from us. OK. This opens up the possibilities for what forms alien intelligence might take. So we shouldn't assume that aliens are going to be like humanoid or think like we do. Exactly. Second, the, you know, the challenges researchers face in, in understanding whale communication, it underscores just how difficult it might be to decode alien messages. Right. Even with, you know, advanced technology, it's a slow and meticulous process. So it's a good reminder to be patient. Right. And not expect instant mm -hmm. results if we ever do encounter an alien signal. Absolutely. And, and finally, I think this research gives us hope. Right. If we can learn to communicate with a species as different from us as whales, right? I mean, who knows what other forms of communication we might be able to unlock in the vastness of space? It's inspiring to think that we're not limited to just our own our own way of communicating, right. And you know, this research is also a great reminder that we we share this planet yeah. with with incredible beings who have their own complex lives and ways of, of understanding the world. Absolutely. So learning to communicate with them, I mean, that could be one of the greatest scientific and cultural achievements of our time. OK, so we've talked about the the challenges of understanding whale communication and and how it could help us decode alien messages. But what would that like? What would that communication look like? Right. Could we have like a, a real back and forth conversation right. like like with Twain, but with extraterrestrials? I mean, that's the ultimate goal, right? <laughs> but it's likely to be even more challenging than communicating with whales. How so? Well, for one thing, we're talking about, you know, potentially vast distances. Right. Even if we receive a signal from an alien civilization, yeah. it could take years or even centuries for our messages to reach them and for their replies to get back to us. So it wouldn't be a quick chat. No, not at all. <laughs> and then there's the issue of, you know, shared understanding. We don't even know if aliens will have the same, like, concept of language as we do. Right. Their communication could be based on something completely different, something we haven't even conceived of. Like what? Give me, give me an example. Well, I mean, it could be based on, like, patterns of light yeah. oh, okay. or um, variations in magnetic fields right. or even something, you know, beyond our current understanding of physics. We have to be prepared to think outside the box when it comes to alien communication. It, it makes you wonder, like, what kind of minds could come up with those forms of communication? Right. And what kind of knowledge or insights they might have to share. Yeah. It's both exciting and a little daunting to like to think about the the possibilities. Mm -hmm. But it, it all starts with being open to the idea that intelligence and communication can take so many forms. Exactly. And that's why, you know, research like whale SETI is so important. Okay. It's expanding our horizons and preparing us for the possibility of, you know, encountering something truly alien. Well, I for one am uh, incredibly curious to see what we what we discover next. Speaking of discoveries, the article mentioned that whale SETI isn't just focused on sound. Right. They're also exploring uh, other forms of whale communication. That's right. They're looking into things like the the bubble rings that humpbacks create. The bubble rings. Yeah. These rings are more than just like a visual spectacle. Right. They could be another way that whales are communicating with each other. So not just songs, but like visual signals too. Exactly. It's like they have a whole multimedia language. It really is. And this is what makes whales such, you know, compelling subjects for studying intelligence and communication. They have this complex interplay of senses and behaviors that we're 
I mean, we're only just beginning to understand. It makes you wonder what other secrets they're they're hiding beneath the surface. I think that's a great place to uh, to wrap up this part of our deep dive. Okay, but before we before we move on, I have one final question. Okay. If we could ask Twain one question. Yeah. What would it be? Hmm. That's a great question. Uh, I think I'd ask him what what his hopes and fears are for the future of the ocean. That's a that's a really profound question. It makes you realize that they have a like a perspective on this planet that we can only begin to imagine. Exactly. They've witnessed the changes in the ocean, I mean over generations. Right. And and their insights could be just invaluable for for understanding, you know, the impact of human activities. It's a humbling thought. Uh-huh. So as we as we wrap up our deep dive into the world of whale communication, right. What are the biggest takeaways you you want our listeners to to remember? Well, I think the the most important takeaway is that intelligence isn't a a one size fits all concept. Okay. Whales have shown us that that complex communication, problem solving abilities, you know, social structures, right. All this stuff can evolve in creatures that are, I mean, vastly different from us. It challenges our assumptions about what it means to be intelligent. Absolutely. And this has huge implications for for our search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Yeah. I mean, if whales can develop these sophisticated communication systems in a completely different environment than our own, right. who's to say what other forms of intelligence might be out there in the universe? It's a reminder to like keep an open mind and not limit our search to life forms that that look or think like us. Exactly. And the second big takeaway is that communication itself can can take many forms, right? Right. Whales use this combination of sound, visuals, yeah, and possibly even other senses that we're. I mean, we're only just beginning to understand. Like they have a a whole sensory language that we're just starting to decode. Right, and this too has implications for SETI. We need to be prepared to encounter alien communication that might be, you know, completely different from anything we've ever imagined. It could be based on light magnetism or even, you know, something beyond our current understanding of physics. It's both exciting and a little daunting to to think about. It is, but it's also incredibly inspiring, right? right. Just imagine the the possibilities if we could like unlock the secrets of alien communication. Yeah. What kinds of knowledge and perspectives might they have to share? Like enough to make you want to dedicate your life to study research. I know what you mean. Uh-huh. And and finally, I think this research is a is a powerful reminder of the the incredible diversity of life uh, right mm-hmm. here on Earth. We we share this planet with beings who have their own complex languages, you know, cultures, right. ways of understanding the world. And we're only just beginning to scratch the surface of their secrets. Exactly. Learning to communicate with whales could be one of the greatest scientific and cultural achievements of our time. It could teach us so much about ourselves, about intelligence, and about our place in the universe. So if our listener could take away one thing from this deep dive, yeah, what, what would you want it to be? I want them to remember that, that the universe is full of wonders, both you know near and far. Right. There's so much we don't know, so much to discover. Just you know, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and never stop being curious about the world around you. Beautifully said. And on that note, I think we've we've reached the end of our uh, deep dive. We've explored the fascinating world of whale communication. Yeah. Its implications for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Right. And the, the profound questions it raises about the, the nature of intelligence itself. It's been a pleasure uh, diving into this topic with you. Likewise. But before we go, I, I want to leave our listener with a final thought to ponder. If we can learn to understand the complex communication of whales right. who are you know right here on our planet what other forms of intelligence might be out there waiting to be discovered both here on earth and beyond right, right. the universe is uh vast and full of mysteries yeah and uh who knows what incredible discoveries await us in the future 